third London summit, we've been amazed by the amount of innovation we've seen here in Europe. And yesterday, for the very first time in ad tech, we had our Optimize event, the first developer conference in ad tech. And we had over 100 developers, product managers, and data scientists from around the ad tech ecosystem in Europe come here to King's Place. And our engineering and product leaders talked and shared and discussed what the future of ad tech would be together with these leaders. And today, I'd like to share with you a panel of leading European ad tech companies who are innovating, creating new and innovative technologies. And here to moderate is our very own Nigel Gilbert, head of European market development. Nigel, thanks, Brian. Take it away. Thank you. Hi there. So um, let's kick things off here just with a quick show of hands. Then I want to know who was here at the AppNexus London Summit last year. Wow. Okay. Very lucky people. Well, you will recall that we put some numbers up to show you the growth forecasts from 2014 to 2017 inside display advertising and then more, uh, more specifically inside programmatic. So let's have a quick recap of what we put. This is us a year on. So I'm sure you'll all agree the last 12 months have been exponential. These are just some of the core European markets we're looking at. Um, but what about the next three years? These are the numbers we put up for that. This is where we think it's still going to go. This is display in the four core European markets. But what about programmatic inside of that? Where, where does that go? So again, we are forecasting exponential growth inside programmatic as well. Again, particularly across these markets where programmatic is, is almost certainly the most prevalent. And finally, here's another slide that we put up last year to show, oh, no, it's not. I've gone one too far. Let me go back. Um, it's actually really disappeared. I wanted to show you how programmatic evolves inside those key markets. But you can actually get this from this slide anyway. You can see that in the Netherlands, it's up to something like 60%. And in the UK by 2017, we're looking at something very similar, 58, 59%. But what's going to get us there? Something else we looked at last year was, what are some of the techniques we discussed? How can we get beyond just the performance campaigns and the standard perceptions of programmatic and really drive it forward and, and embrace those kind of numbers? So I'm very lucky to be joined by three of our key partners from three very different markets and three different businesses to showcase examples of how we think we can actually get beyond this. So we like to foster innovation. As a result, we want to look at what some of these examples can actually do to help. So without further ado, to begin with, branding. Now, branding is something we all hear a lot about. Branding still represents the largest portion of any display market in, in any, uh, well, certainly across Europe. Um, and so what, what can we do to embrace programmatic techniques to attract branding campaign money? So here to talk about this first is Paul Silver from Media IQ. Paul, thank you very much. Take it away. So as Hugh Grant just mentioned, uh, we recently launched uh, uh, we recently launched a brand product called Connected Brand. Now, I'm not here today to talk about what that is, but more about the why and the how. So we've spent months interviewing, surveying, and listening to clients around what are their key challenges and needs when it comes to branding online. And what became really clear was actually that these needs aren't being met sufficiently right now, that there is a major gap to fill when it comes to branding online. Now, I'm going to show you a quick video where we've gone on some recent roadshows asking our clients what are the key challenges they have that aren't being met, and what does programmatic brand mean to them? So there's some interesting sound bites to take out from this. If we are asking a, a, an advertiser to divert money, like from let's say from offline to online, uh, our our key uh, key point there is we can measure who has seen your ad, and we can track that user into what they have done. That was not possible to do on offline. The benefits of linking your brand activity. To, to your DR activity and really using the data you're gathering at a brand level can really boost the performance of your DR as well. I think for me it's, it's all about, um, it's high impact creative, uh, definitely, definitely at scale. There's so many ways of, of looking at um, the data for, for doing brand campaigns. It's not just about taking a 
a geographical location and lumping everybody together from that, um, clients really need to be able to identify exactly um, who their target market is and the ways of reaching them to in the right places. It's definitely about cross device, but I think for us, we were, especially I think for Vodafone, is that they want to take it one step further. So that might that might be using iBeacon technology, for instance. It, it's really tracking that conversion, like you sort of noted from the top to the bottom end of the funnel, irrespective of what device that they're on. Nailing that, I think it's the holy grail. So apologies for background noise in those videos, a lot of booze flying that evening. Um, so I'm now just going to talk to you around how are we trying to tackle this. Now this isn't like the full feature set of our product, um, by no means all the use cases we're covering, but the three key themes actually that need to be solved when it comes to effectively building a brand product in, in programmatic is first this idea of identity management. Now what are we doing to unify insights and connect people across every device? Now, We've investing a lot of time, a lot of products, dev and R&D resource into this and building real thought leadership, but also we're partnering with AdBrain and licensing their device graph technology that enables us to pair our entire universe of device IDs and user IDs that gives us a singular point, which is game changing when it comes to our ability to plan, buy and measure more effectively. This is gonna become table stakes in the next six months. Um, secondly, it's about being relevant. Now, we've all been we're all very adept at understanding users, knowing who's the right user, segmenting them within an inch of their life almost. But what we haven't been great at is knowing when is the right time to engage, when is the right time to create an impact. So we know as consumers that we're influenced by the world around us, not just by what we see in front of us on the screen. So we've built the tech to understand which of these moments uh, are influencing current consumer behavior, whether that's news and current affairs, social trends, what they're seeing on TV, what the weather's like this evening. Built the ability to then trigger campaigns, adapt campaigns in real time to those moments, and then injecting that into the ad itself. Now, a perfect illustration of when this would have been phenomenal last year was when Apple launched iPhone 6. So we knew that there was a lot of negative sentiment created when it came to the launch of that product, because apparently it bent in people's pockets. So we knew the most tweeted hashtag was around Bendgate, now, what an amazing opportunity for Samsung to be able to know, I know the right users to target, users that are on iPhone 5s, probably looking to upgrade to iPhone 6, all the fanboys, and some in the front row I can see, uh, knowing when's the right time. Actually, they've just launched a product that bends, and what's the right message? Hey, we're Samsung, our phones don't bend. Now, it's not rocket science, right? But how do you create the perfect moment of impact? And this is something that you have to build. It has to be engineered. And then lastly, it's about measuring it. How do we look to creating an understanding of how consumers are being influenced beyond clicks? So we're looking to pilot image-based and visual-based surveys with some leading brands where we're using the power of the image and the visual recognition to understand how are brands and consumers being influenced and how is products and brand recognition and recall being impacted before, during, and post-campaign. And by unlocking those insights on a user level, it becomes a really invaluable opportunity to plug into the creative and strategic planning process. So that's me. Well done. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Before you, uh, before you sit down, I just want to, don't worry, I'm not going to retaliate for the comment earlier. <laughs> for anyone who was here two years ago, you'll know that Paul was getting his own back for that. So watch the rerun there, and, you, and you'll see what happened there. But just a quick question about, about this. I mean, it's obviously fantastic. Thanks for talking us through it. But um, looking at, 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 the, at the presentation, it seems like a lot of the techniques to unlock branding money look a lot like techniques to, to, to run performance campaigns. Well, yeah, and that's, that's why it's such an amazing opportunity for a lot of companies here today, is that the analytics and the technology that's powered performance for the last five years yeah. is going to be the, the key to unlocking the opportunities and answering the needs when it comes to brand. So we're well positioned, as are many others in the room. It'd be great if no one else tried to crack the brand challenge, just left it to us, but you know, <laughs> I think we're all well positioned for that. Marvellous. All right, well, look, thanks again. Um, keeping things um, moving along, uh, another one of the key challenges that we hear about with regards to expanding into brand is the creative itself. Um, the creative that appears on the publisher's website, obviously the creatives that the advertisers can use. And programmatic native, please, Philippe, come up, is certainly a buzzword. So here is Philippe Bernal you, from Quantum in Paris to talk about how they're solving that challenge. Thanks, Philippe. Hello. Thank you. So, hello, everybody. So my thing and my 
Pash passion, sorry, is programmatic native advertising. 18 months ago, everybody was saying, we are completely crazy, this will never work, this will never fly. Actually, it does, or I believe it does. So what's the, uh, what's the logic behind it? Um, first thing, it's about brands. Uh, brands have great stories to tell. Brands have content, they have expertise, they have know-how, they have websites, they have videos, they have everything. And it's high time digital advertising helps them taking advantage of all these assets. Second is that advertising can be non-interruptive. I won't dispute in front of this crowd the, the fact that standard advertising does make the job and does have an impact. But I believe and we believe that non-interruptive advertising, something more integrated, something in feed, some kind of advertorial, does make a very good job at providing a lasting influence on customers and real engagement. And part, this is particularly true, of course, on mobile, uh, mobile web. Third point is that technology will change the native advertising game. You know, native advertising is about content integration. It's about uh, brand content. It's about ads within the user experience. And until now, this was a very slow and complex process, requesting one-to-one -one negotiations between an agency and some publishers. It didn't really scale. It was isolated from the rest of the digital media ecosystem. You couldn't do sequencing between native and the rest of the business. And we wanted to change that, and technology can change that, programmatic can change that. And this is what we are, we are doing. And finally, we do believe that our common future in this room lies in higher value, more valuable advertising. Agencies, advertisers, trading desks, publishers, we all believe that we need more valuable advertising. Everybody is ready to pay for it as long as we can measure it somehow. So that's how we engaged into this journey of programmatic native advertising. So what we created, very simple. Uh, first, a unique end-to-end -end platform to create, to deliver, to optimize native ads, both the placements on the publisher side and the ads on the creative, sorry, on the agency and the, and, and the buy side. And second, we created the hub to create this market for a liquid, effective market about native ads, and we cre simply created the first European native advertising exchange, quantum native solution exchange. So let me uh, go through a very quick demo. It's like one minute, and I'm the voiceover, so forgive me if it's not perfect. So let's get started on this crash course about uh, the quantum platform? Yes, maybe, maybe not. Mm. Hello? <laughs> There's a strike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you go. So you're a publisher, you create your space, you set your you set your floor prices, you set the user experience, expandable, not expandable, the type of layout, you choose it, you choose the position on the page. This is done in like five minutes, and you can preview, sorry, it's here, you can preview the ads, here you go, in real time. Now you're a trading desk, you're an agency, you create the ad, title, description, content, expand content, photographs, the URL of redirection, the code of the web page to which uh, it's, uh, the ad is redirecting, and you're adding all the targeting you need on each device, capping by segment, all what you can do with programmatic, and then you're ready to display your native content on a multitude of targeted participating websites. And you can preview that in real time, and you can do it. It takes approximately seven minutes once you've been trained. All right, so that's the, uh, that, that's the platform. Uh, where, where, where are we at now? Uh, absolutely incredible metrics. Uh, we uh, are, first, we are very pleased to uh, 
uh, see regularly with uh, AppNexus that we just record the highest CPM on the platform in France, which is our main market today. Uh, so it tells a lot about the value uh, of the ads and uh, the, the, the advantage for publishers of having that. But it's not only about publishers, it's also about advertisers and engagement. And we post click-through rates that are 10 to 30 times higher than comparable uh, display space. Uh, and uh, we deliver approximately 30% on our volume on mobile web, which is so important for publishers to be able to monetize these mobile audiences. And eventually, we have half a billion fully visible impressions within our market. And I think we mentioned earlier on this stage the importance of true visibility real quality impressions, real engagement versus bots and everything. And this is exactly the type of quality that we, we provide. And we are pleased to work with a number of trading desks, advertisers, publishers. And I think the momentum is just ter <laughs> terrific. So very quickly, why this, we, did this work? Simply, I think we managed to solve this usual kind of dilemma in our business between the chicken and the egg, between the supply and the demand. And we managed to solve that because we had a tremendous support from a number of trading desks, which helped uh, creating demand. And more demand created more auction density, which attracted more publishers, and which made this positive uh, momentum and snowball effect. And I want to say, uh, uh, from the bottom of my heart, special thanks to all the trading desks that supported us uh, in France where at, uh, when we started this business, particularly Group M. I know they are in the room. They have fantastic people uh, doing this. And thank you. And thank you, Vivaki. Thank you, Amnet. Because without the strong initiation of demand, this would never have worked. Key takeaways uh, today uh, about this, this story. Uh, the first thing is that I believe our business will be uh, sh increasingly shaped by holistic platforms that kind of create, deliver, optimize, in and distribute in real time pieces of branded content. And all this made by these, these platforms that do it in a, in a single uh, workflow. The second point is that this will be programmatically driven. Programmatic is the enabler just because it provides scale to custom. And lastly, we believe that brands will express themselves differently. They will use more of their brand values. They will use more storytelling. They will kind of be able to create a more genuine, better, longer lasting engagement. And that's what we like to call this next generation performance. Thank you. Thank you very much. There you go. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Philippe. Philippe. I would have asked Philippe a question, but he's gone quite far over there with the, with the Oscar acceptance speech part in the middle there. It's very touching. I feel I should be thanking some people now, too. Let's go with my mother, maybe. Stuff like that. Um, but look, amazing. Programmatic native. Thanks, Philippe. So to finish things off, what if you're in a market where everybody's innovating? What if you're in a market where programmatic is, is already 60% of, of, of display trading? So Tim, Tim come up. Tim's here from, from the Dutch market. You know, how do you innovate in a market where everybody is trying to get ahead? Here to talk about his latest project is Tim Dienen Thank from BannerConnect. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Good morning. When we first started talking about this session, uh, Nigel and I and, and the rest of the group, we quickly agreed that program, uh, creativity in programmatic is much more than trading large formats via ideal ID. In a market like the Netherlands, when you, have to, uh, when you want to grow your business and when you want to add value, you have to deliver sophistication. Our clients, basically everyone in the market, expects it. So when we have a look here, this is the ad spend study. It's a research done by IAB and Deloitte. And last year alone, the programmatic market in the Netherlands grew with 39%. Although the forecast is, is a bit downwards for, for uh, this year, so it will be a bit less. Um, something that will not decrease is the amount of branding campaigns uh, spent of executed programmatically. Actually, one of my favorite questions in the ad spend research study is that when you ask both the buyer and the seller to provide an indication of campaign objectives, what would they say? So they asked buyers, 
what percentage of campaigns had branding objectives, and they came with 25%. Sellers were much less aware of that, and they ended up indicating that was just 3%. So we came to the conclusion, something that will not uh, uh, decrease is the amount of branding campaigns. But what is the programmatic industry doing to help brand marketeers? What were we doing at that time? Nothing. Uh, do we have any tools for that? No. So we started wondering, where can we innovate? And soon that discussion led to uh, viewability, because if there's something really, truly vital, it's tracking viewability. We've been experimenting with viewability tracking for over six years now. And at one point, I guess it's around five years back, we actually built our own tracking solution. And it was, it was so cool. It was able to track everything on a per second level. But the amount of QPS that generated was simply too much for us back then. We couldn't handle it. We learned a lot from it. Also, at that point, the average price of media was roughly 20 cents. Why would you add another five to 10 cents in cost to that price? No one was willing to do that. If you fast forward to now, you see that viewability uh, has become uh, a requirement when you run a campaign. So we took that deeper. So we started looking, what if we take an off-the-shelf viewability uh, provider? Next slide. Yeah. What if we take an off-the-shelf viewability tracking provider? And we take that deeper. We take that data and we overlay it on a per-user level. What if we then also overlay that with audience data? What if we match it with panel data, with uh, DMP data, with first party data? What if we overlay performance data, like response and conversions? And what if we could see, what if we could see the side effects on search and social? Also, what if we would just make an analysis on cost-effective placements? What we found out is that in many of the placements we were constantly targeting never amount to anything. Maybe we can even apply machine learning for that in the future and just get rid of them. So we took that further, and uh, we realized that if we're able to do this, we have a great product. And if we're able to do this, that gives us the ability to, to, to develop a new currency, to introduce a new currency. And when reality kind of settled in, uh, we realized that's not our place. Who are we to uh, come up with a new currency? But we did realize then that we have all the tools, we have all the metrics to provide, uh, to provide to an advertiser to let them build their own currency. So, we were able to do all of these things. Over the last three months, we've brought all the puzzle pieces together and we came up with Project 2020, which is ha having a perfect vision, a perfect vision on engagement and performance. We took all these pieces together and we came up with three product pillars. We have measurement, we have attribution, and we have activation. Within measurement, we are now actually able to uh, measure exposure time on a per user level. That's highly actionable data. We can overlay that with audience information, like for example, at the end of the campaign, we can say the exposure time was 2300 hours in this target group, female 20 to 35. The exposure time in females 35 to 50 was 900 hours, but the, the net purchase value in that last group was much higher with a lower cost. And that's a very important insight. In the activation part, when we overlay the, the, the panels or the data, it, it's much easier for an, a client to see where did my spend go. Maybe you can even take offline data into account and see if it makes sense. So one of the things we learned and this is based on April data. We just took all the data where we measured feelability and we started moving backwards. So you see here that uh, the post-click CPA decreases heavily at the 22nd mark. This means that optimizing for that 22nd mark is a much better solution than optimizing on contact frequencies, which are very commonly used. We were actually able to prove that the contact frequencies is this in, in this of in, on this data was a negative because it didn't work. It was a far better solution to just optimize on that 22nd mark, and even if you take that down to, if you take that further to the two minute mark, you see that the CPA decreases with 70%. I'm not saying we can make up for all of this because you will always have to buy media eventually that doesn't yield to anything, but you can make very good optimization decisions. So, I'm doing really good on time, Nigel. So this is how we ended up in, for us, a completely new market. So data as a service. What we want to do is we want to bring all these metrics to advertisers, and we want to have, have them, help them develop their own currencies. And we know that will be uh, quite a, a nice job to do, but we're going for it. So.
Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Um, I think we're a really bit short, so we'll I'll just kind of we'll come on. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. All right. Well, um, look, that's three, I'm sure you'll agree, very, uh, very effective and innovative examples of what's actually possible. You know, it shows that innovation is alive and thriving on the AppNexus platform. So I've got three takeaways from that. I don't know what you guys picked up. But if you want to drive, uh, drive forward, drive into branding campaigns, you have to relate to building brands and building the brand story um, is what's required. Storytelling at scale is legitimately possible. And then finally, advertisers can now even build their own currency too. So all it remains for me to do is thank you very much for Tim, Philippe, and Paul. And thank all of you. Cheers. Great job. That's done. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. It's time for a break. But first, I want to thank all of our sponsors. Um, you sponsors are what make today possible. And if you don't mind, at the end, I'd like to clap for all of them. Um, Paragon Digital, Admantex, LFD, AdSquare, Flex One, Adomic, Comscore, Seismic, Microsoft, Integral Ad Science, and Adgorithms. I'd like to pause. Well, first clap. There you go. And then we're going to clap again because I'm excited to announce that Adgorithms is going to go public tomorrow on the London Stock Exchange. <laughs> or, are you here? I can't see anything. Over there? Hey, Or, congratulations. So give him a hug. He's buying drinks over the coffee break. <laughs> And so it's just a great example. Uh, after that innovation panel, here's a company, Algorithms, that's been innovating on top of the AppNexus platform, building custom algorithmic solutions for the past, I think, five years, and now able to take the company public based on the growth and innovation that they've developed. So a great endpoint to what we've seen so far this morning. Mm -hmm.